Hello and welcome to the Community Memorial Hospital Total Joint Boot Camp. Congratulations on planning for your upcoming total knee replacement. We thank you for participating in this educational seminar to better prepare for your procedure. We hope that this information will provide you with practical and useful tips that you can use now, during, and following your hospital stay. My name is Maren Curtis, and I am one of the occupational therapists at Community Memorial Hospital. The following are recommendations that apply to most patients following a total joint procedure. Each patient, however, is very unique, and your physician will customize your care plan to fit your specific needs. Please remember to follow any post-op instructions from your surgeon if they differ from those detailed in today's presentation. Now I'd like to detail a few things to expect during your hospital stay. Both physical therapy and occupational therapy will strive to work with you twice daily during the weekdays, Monday through Friday. Physical therapy also offers services over the weekend, one to two times a day. The rehabilitation team will plan to approach the floor daily by approximately 9 a.m. So plan to be up and out of bed with a goal to sit up in the chair the day following surgery. Recent changes have also allowed some participants to get up and start their assessments the day of surgery. So do not be surprised to see your physical or occupational therapist on the, that day as well. It's important to plan and to, to take and receive pain medication prior to therapy. This will be helpful in helping you to be successful to meet your goals in anticipation of returning to your home environment. Our goal as a rehabilitation team is to help teach you about any weight bearing, lifting, or range of motion precautions that you may have in place following surgery. Occupational therapy will be involved in your care daily. We would like to teach you strategies and adaptations to help you to be successful in managing your daily self-care tasks otherwise known as activities of daily living or ADLs. We will help by demonstrating and educating you on the available adaptive equipment for lower body dressing. Also, we'll help in making life a little bit more easy by practicing safe walker techniques, including transporting items safely about your home, which may be very helpful as you engage in homemaking tasks. We will also discuss and plan for home safety modifications, including the use of durable medical equipment, such as a tub bench or a toilet seat riser. Some special precautions to consider, including avoiding heavy lifting, You'll want to avoid lifting greater than 50 pounds on a repetitive basis. Also, remember, do not kneel on your surgical knee. And avoid any high impact activities such as jogging, jumping, contact sports, or high impact aerobics. Skiing, tennis, or repetitive motion such as lifting or stair climbing. Instead, consider getting involved in some of the following activities including recreational walking, swimming, golfing, bicycling, or normal day-to-day -day stair climbing. Also, avoid sleeping with the pillow right beneath the knee joint. Flexion or bending at the knee and hip increases the chance that the muscles will shorten and make walking and other mobility tasks more difficult. Instead, use a pillow directly under the calf. If needed, a knee immobilizer may be prescribed by your physician and may be considered to be worn at night in order to keep the knee straight while you're sleeping. You may also sleep on your unaffected or non-surgical side with a pillow placed between your knees for comfort. 
In regards to your incision, make sure to keep your incision clean, dry, and intact. Your surgeon will let you know when it is safe and time to get back in the shower. Please consult your surgeon prior to using a sauna, whirlpool, or hot tub. Using these may increase swelling and affect your healing process. And finally, do not drive immediately after surgery. It is important to consider alternative transportation options, including community mobility resources, family, friends, and neighbors. You'll want to avoid driving until cleared by your surgeon. You'll want to make sure that you have really good range of motion, strength, and reaction time, and that you are also done taking any narcotic pain medication that could affect your judgment. Now we will review the available adaptive equipment that can make your daily self-care skills a little bit easier following a total knee replacement. And now we have the opportunity to review some of the adaptive equipment that can be really helpful to you as you recover from your total hip or total knee replacement. Some of this adaptive equipment um, will be required of you after a total hip replacement in order to help you adhere to all of the precautions that are set in place. And for those who are having a total knee replacement, it'll help you to be as independent as possible with your self-care tasks in light of the swelling, inflammation, and difficulty with range of motion that you may be having. The first tool is called a reacher. This tool can be very helpful as you need to pick up items off of the floor. But most importantly, it will help you to become as independent as possible with lower body dressing. I'd like to show you how to put on a pair of shorts. The key will be to remember to dress your surgical leg first. You'll grasp the shorts or pants on that side and lace them over your surgical leg. Once that is through, you'll lace your non-surgical leg through the pant or short hole. Bring your pants or shorts all the way up to your knee level before you grasp them with your hands. You'll want to make sure that they're up as high as possible. Now, you'll want to grab your walker. As you go to stand, make sure you have one hand on the walker at all times as you pull up your pants. Now I'll show you how to remove your clothing. Again, use one hand at a time to remove the clothing from your waist level. Then you'll reach back for the better chair and sit down. This time, you'll want to remove the article of clothing from your non-surgical side, as it's more mobile at this time and then remove the shorts from your surgical side. This tool is called a sock aid. There is a sponge on the back that will help keep the sock in place as you, as you use the item. What I recommend is putting this ridge or lip of the sock aid right up against your body. Now, you'll bring the sock over the aid. If it is a longer sock and if you're able, bring that sock right over the knot, like so. And now what I'll have you do is you'll toss the sock aid out in front of you, put your foot in, and pull. Keep pulling until the sock releases from the aid. Now I'll show you how to remove your sock. There are a couple of different options. You may use the reacher as you 
did before, or a dressing stick. Use this part of the dressing stick to hook onto your sock and to remove from your foot. And again, you may use that reacher to help you pick up items from the floor. And that is the safest option. I'd like to show you how to put on your shoes. There are a couple of adaptations that you can make, including the use of a shoehorn. And that's what I'll show first. You'll use the reacher to grasp the tongue of the shoe, placing the shoehorn in the back. As you put your toe in, that will help you keep your joints in alignment as you put on your shoe. You may notice that I have a different lace in my shoe. For tie shoes, these are elastic laces, which can be really helpful to allow you to slip your foot in and out of the shoe easily. Otherwise, we would recommend a shoe that allows you to slip on without tying and untying. The next option I'd like to show you how to use a foot funnel. This is a unique device that also helps to keep the heel of your shoe from collapsing. In order to use this device, what I'll have you do is reach down for the shoe with a reacher and bring it up, bring it up to your lap. You can place the foot funnel right in the shoe, like so. Again, you'll use the reacher to slowly and carefully lower the shoe with the funnel down to the floor. Placing your toe in first, and then pulling that foot funnel out of the shoe. It makes the task a whole lot easier and safer after surgery. This is a lung handled sponge, which will be helpful to you after a total hip or knee replacement to bathe safe, safely. You can reach down to your feet to wash your feet and toes and your lower legs without surpassing that 90 degree restriction at the hip. It's also very helpful to wash your back. The final piece of adaptive equipment is called a leg lifter. Ideally, we would like you to be able to use your own strength to get yourself in and out of bed safely. There are times, however, where it is very difficult to raise and lower your legs. So this device can be helpful and your therapist will help you decide if this is a good tool for you to use. As you're transitioning from sitting to lying, you'll want to move yourself closer to the head of the bed. And if you can, angle yourself. You can use this device by wrapping it around your foot, keeping the bar on the inner part of your leg, and using your arms to help lift that leg into bed. You can also do this for the other leg, like so. All of those tools are the adaptive equipment options that we have available to you here at Cloquet Community Memorial Hospital. When you come for your surgery, your occupational therapist will help in determining which adaptive equipment pieces will be effective for you. The following are some home safety considerations after surgery. General Principles include reducing or eliminating any clutter. Free up those walkways so that you can navigate about your home with the use of a walker or crutches. You'll want to remove any throw rugs. Roll those up and tuck them away in, in a closet for now. Also, consider making sure that your door widths are a minimum of 32 inches wide. For some, that may include removing a door temporarily and adding a curtain in its place to allow that accessibility needed using a walker. All entryways, you'll want to make sure that you can level out a threshold 
This will ease your access or entry into your home. Make sure that the railings are very sturdy and if possible, having railings on both sides of a stairway can be very helpful. You may consider adding stair treads to the outer stairs to increase the traction, especially during the seasons where snow and rain may affect your safety. Stair treads come in different colors and lengths, often in a roll that can be found at any local hardware store and can be added using nails or the adhesive on the back of the roll. It may also be helpful if mobility has become difficult over a long period of time to consider a ramp. Regarding the internal stairway, it's also very good to consider a low glare overhead light. Railings again on both sides, those are rubber or abrasive treads, and a light switch at both the top and the bottom of the stairway. Again, if mobility has become increasingly diff difficult over the years, a stair lift may be considered. Within the bedroom, you'll want to make sure all walkways are again clear of any clutter. If you're having any difficulty getting in and out of, the bed, out of bed, consider a bed rail. Your physical and occupational therapist will help you in determining whether or not a bed rail would be helpful to you. Also, within the closet, lower closet railings to a height that is be below shoulder height and above waist height. Or use and move commonly used items to a counter height. It can be helpful to use a reacher to access items that are out of reach, much like that reacher that was pictured or depicted in the video earlier. Within the bathroom, this item is starred because there are, this is one area of the home that causes a big risk for falls. It can be helpful to add grab bars in the tub or shower surround as well as around the toilet. We really recommend utilizing the stainless steel bars that can be secured very safely into the studs of your walls. If you have any questions regarding grab bar installation, consider connecting with a contractor. General principles can also be suggested to you during your hospital stay. Handheld shower heads can be really helpful for ease of access in bathing following a procedure. Also, tub benches and shower chairs can help save your energy, conserve that energy for the other tasks that you need, and if you're having any difficulty with balance, is a good consideration after surgery. There are also some great non-slip flooring alternatives that can be found at various stores. And a roll-in or curbless shower can also be very effective. Getting on and off the toilet stool is one challenge that many people face. And having a high toilet stool installed greater than 17 in inches can be very helpful. However, there are alternatives. Pictured here, there is a toilet seat riser that can be installed with railings on both sides. On the bottom left picture, this is another example of a toilet seat riser that can be installed in between the bowl and the toilet seat itself. There are also commodes available that slide in nicely over the existing toilet and can temporarily raise the height to make that transfer that much easier. Within the shower setup, you might consider a shower chair, but pictured to the right here is one example of an extended tub transfer bench. This can be really helpful for those of you who do have a tub and shower combination. This specific bench allows you to sit on the edge, swing your legs up and over the edge of the tub and slide yourself into the bathing setup safely. The kitchen is another room that's important to consider. 
just like in the bathroom, lower any commonly used items to low shelves or counters. Use a reacher to access any out of reach items and consider asking for support from your family and friends to prepare meals. We highly recommend consider considering planning ahead and freezing a few meals, maybe two weeks worth, so that you do not have to worry about that initially upon discharge to the home setting. And finally, use a walker tray to safely transport items about your home. Now that you've watched the occupational therapy portion of this presentation, we invite you to watch the physical therapy presentation for your upcoming total knee replacement. My name is Michael Barrett, and I'm a physical therapist at CMH. And once again, thank you for taking the time to prepare for your upcoming surgery. Remember, these are recommendations, and each patient may present differently before and following surgery. Each person is unique, and your recovery may look different compared to others. We encourage you to follow your surgeon's plan of care as it is designed specifically for you. As part of the team, physical therapy will help you start mobilization and early range of motion the day of or the day following surgery, working on exercises, transfers, and walking. We will also assess and assist with mobility which includes getting in and out of bed, standing from a chair or bedside, walking at least household distances with an assistive device, and stair climbing, depending on the number of stairs you may have at home. It is our goal to educate you regarding safety, precautions, post-operative care, as well as exercises, all with the main focus of enhancing your surgical outcome. While you are staying in the hospital, we will see you two times per day, Monday through Friday, and one to two times per day on Saturday and or Sunday, if you were to stay in the hospital over the weekend. Physical therapy staff will be seeing you for therapy between 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., and then again between 1 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. With assistance of physical therapy staff, plan to be up and out of bed with a goal of sitting up in a chair and possibly walking with a walker the day of or following surgery. Plan to take your pain medication prior to therapy as it will help you accomplish your goals and aid in overall mobility. Your length of stay in the hospital is expected to be one to three days. After this, you will likely return home with either outpatient physical therapy or home care physical therapy. Alternate options include staying as a swing bed patient or being transferred to a skilled nursing facility, both with the goal of continued rehabilitation if you are not ready or safe to return home. It is ultimately up to the physician to make the determination with input from you and therapy staff of when you are medically stable and ready for discharge. Where you discharge to depends on your progress and insurance coverage. We have a social worker and a case manager who will be available to assist you with discharge planning. Prior to returning home, you will need to be independent with bed mobility, be able to rise from a chair without assistance, be able to walk at least household distances with the use of an assistive device, and be able to go up and down stairs if you have stairs at home. You will be expected to readily participate in your physical therapy sessions to the best of your ability, including exercises, getting out of bed, sitting up in a chair, walking, and stair climbing. You are in control of your rehabilitation. Your physical therapist will assist you in meeting your functional goals, but to improve your overall outcome, you are expected to work on your range of motion and exercise outside of your physical therapy sessions. This is key once you return home as well. Exercise and mobility are very important elements of your recovery after surgery. Your surgical joint will stiffen following surgery, so keeping your knee moving is essential. 
a physical therapist's role is to assist you with those activities that you are unable to do while encouraging you to be as independent as possible. Let's talk pain. There will be pain following surgery, unfortunately. But the good news is that this pain is expected to get better. Keeping this in mind, as you are recovering and pushing yourself to attain your specific goals, it is important that you work with nursing staff to manage your pain in order to improve your ability to participate in physical therapy. Be proactive and stay on top of your pain medication. Request it from nursing staff at set intervals as prescribed by your surgeon. Other ideas for controlling pain are as follows. Get up to move around with the help of staff. Do your exercises in bed or while seated. Ask your nursing staff to get you some ice. Ice should be applied surrounding the surgical knee for 20 minutes at a time and then be removed. This can be repeated one time per hour. Elevate your surgical knee above the level of your heart without placing a pillow directly underneath your knee. Instead, place the pillow along your calf. And ask nursing staff to utilize the CPM. When you are in the hospital and not with therapy staff, please always use the call light to contact nursing to ask for assistance with mobility. This is for your safety and to decrease your fall risk after having your total knee replacement. You will most likely be using a walker for walking after surgery. Some may choose to use crutches if appropriate. However, a walker is the most commonly prescribed assistive device. You will continue to use an assistive device until your, until your surgeon or physical therapist tells you not to. How much weight you can place through your surgical leg, also known as your weight-bearing status, is determined by your surgeon. Your weight-bearing status will be one of the following. Protected weight-bearing is tolerated, which means that you can put as much weight as you can tolerate on your surgical leg when using a walker or crutches. This is the most common weight-bearing status. Partial weight-bearing. This indicates that you can only put a percentage of your body weight through your surgical leg when using a walker or crutches. Toe-touch weight-bearing means that you can only place the foot of your surgical leg gently on the floor, but only for balance when using a walker or crutches. Non-weight-bearing is straightforward. You can place no weight through your surgical leg when using a walker or crutches. You will need to be able to go up and down the stairs prior to returning home. You will be asked at the hospital how many stairs you may have to get into your home and how many stairs you need to use once inside your home. Also, you will be asked if you have railings on your stairs. And if you do not have railings, you may want to think about installing one as it increases safety. Try to make note of this information prior to coming into the hospital. The method that you will be taught is this. Going up the stairs leading with the good or the non-operative leg and down the stairs leading with the bad or the operative leg. Up with the good, down with the bad. In order to enter your home or to gain access to your bedroom or bathroom, uh, you'll likely have to climb stairs. There is a way that you can do this that's easiest and safest on your surgical leg that we want to take you through right now. I have my patient Andrew here who's going to be our demonstrator. As you can see, he has an orange piece of tape around his right leg that's going to be his surgical leg in this video. So as Andrew climbs the stairs, you can see that he's going to lead with his strong leg or his left leg going up. This is his non-surgical leg and will do most of the work when going up the stairs. Now as he goes down the stairs, he's going to lead with the opposite leg. He's going to lead with his, his surgical leg or the bad leg. This is so that the non-surgical leg will do the work of lowering his body when going down the stairs. So you can remember, up with the good and down with the bad. The CPM is a machine designed to help you with your knee mobility and comfort. This machine will slowly bend and then straighten your knee. 
The CPM will be applied to your leg either the day of or the day following your surgery. The machine should be on at least two times per day for up to two hours each time, though this is not a hard rule, but more like a guideline. The CPM will go home with you for you to use in the first few weeks of your recovery. Physical therapy staff will show you how to increase the amount of knee flexion as tolerated using the remote attached to the CPM. Use of the CPM should not be painful. If it is, you need to stop the machine and call nursing staff for assistance. Now we would like to show you a couple of key components of setup and use of the CPM machine um, for home use after you leave the hospital. As you can see, the machine is kind of big and bulky and hard to move around. So oftentimes it's best if you can find a place at home that you can place the machine and you don't have to move it. Um, if you have any extra pain, um, discomfort, or trouble using this machine when you're at home, um, please contact the hospital and, talk to, and ask to talk to someone from the Durable Medical Equipment Office. And if they can't be reached, feel free to contact the physical therapy department with any questions that you might have. Now, it typically works best um, to set the mas machine up where these metal rods can be placed against a firm surface to prevent the machine from sliding downwards. These, these rods are adjustable and typically works best if you have a footboard on your bed or a headboard or even the armrest on a couch. There's one key component of placing your leg on the machine at home as the settings will be adjusted uh, to fit your leg when leaving the hospital. But as Andrew places his leg up on the machine, I want to point out the most important thing to do and remember at home is to make sure where the machine is bending is going to match where your knee bends. So the middle of your knee is going to line up right here. And that will put you in a, in a proper position um, for effective use of the machine. Now once you've placed your leg on the machine, you're going to be in control of how much flexion or how much bend the machine is taking you through. If you look at the remote, you'll see this FLX button, which stands for flexion. To adjust flexion, you'll hold this button and use the up and down arrow to adjust how much knee bending you are performing. The left hand side, you'll see EXT for extension. You most likely will not bother with this once you get home, as it will be set at negative five or zero to take you through full extension. You can see a speed button here. You can also hold that button and either adjust the speed up or down. And at the bottom, you have a start and a stop button, which is the most important button to remember. Your physical therapist will instruct you in exercises the day of or the day following your surgery. When you are ready to leave the hospital, you will be able to do the exercises by yourself or with some help from another person. It is just as important to complete your exercises after you leave the hospital as it was when you were doing them with your physical therapist in the hospital. Range of motion exercises should be done at minimum three times per day, and strengthening should be done two times per day. I would like to emphasize the part about range of motion. Over time, you will get stronger and your walking will improve, but your range of motion, or how much you are bending and straightening the knee, will stiffen with time, unless worked on early and aggressively. In addition, you should incorporate hourly walks around your home or outside into your daily routine, pending weather or safety of the terrain. Your goal will be to perform 20 repetitions of each exercise. So now let's go through some of these exercises that we've been talking about in the previous slides. So that way you have an understanding of what the exercises are uh, coming into the hospital prior to surgery. We also recommend that you practice these exercises at home um, before you come into the hospital so that way, uh, not only will it improve your range of motion and your strength, but it will also improve your overall outcome after surgery. As you're performing these exercises at home, uh, if you experience any extra pain or you have any trouble with these exercises, please stop and feel free to contact the physical therapy department if you have any questions. Um, now let's go through some of the basics to start with. I have my patient Andrew here who will be demonstrating some of these exercises as I talk and instruct.
These exercises are listed in the, in the slides following this video. Um, so we'll take you through three pages of exercises. We'll start with page one. The first exercise is called an ankle pump. So as you can see here, Andrew's going to push his foot down and up. And it's very basic, uh, easy to perform while you're lying in bed or while you're seated. And this exercise is important for maintaining uh, fluid circulation and blood flow while lying in bed after surgery. The next exercise is called a heel slide. So as Andrew slides his heel back on the bed, uh, he's bending his knee and then he's going to slowly go back down and straighten his leg out once again. This exercise is particularly important and will be emphasized for people that have had their knee replaced as we want to start early range of motion and we want to push this to improve your overall surgical outcome. The next exercise is also going to be uh, emphasized for people that have had a total knee replacement. Um, it's called a knee extension stretch. So um, we're going to uh, put a, a folded pillow or a towel underneath the patient's ankle like this. And basically we're going to have gravity just hanging down on your knee and you want to try to straighten out your knee as much as possible. This again is very important for gaining your range of motion as soon as you can after surgery to help with standing and walking. So for the final exercise on page one, Andrew's in a seated position. This is called a seated knee flexion. And so he's going to move his foot underneath the bed or underneath the chair that you're sitting on and he's gonna slide it back forward. To enhance the stretch that you're getting on your surgical knee, you can take the opposite leg and pull back, um, again, to increase the amount of stretch that you're feeling to improve your overall range of motion. So moving on to page two of the exercises, um, the first three exercises on this page are called isometric contractions. This, mean, this means that Andrew isn't going to be moving his body, but he's going to be tightening his muscles to get a firm muscle contraction. The first exercise is called a quad set. So you're going to be tightening up the muscle on the front of your thigh called your quadriceps and tightening it, holding it for five seconds, and then relaxing. Now if you're having a hard time feeling this contraction, uh, one cue that we use in the hospital is to try to push the back of your knee down into the bed underneath you, hold for five, and then relax. The next exercise is similar. It's called a hamstring set. So the only difference um, is that he is going to bend his knee slightly and he's going to dig his heel down into the bed almost like he's pulling himself forward this time focusing on contracting the muscle in the back of your thigh, thigh called your hamstrings. Again, holding for five seconds and relaxing. The third exercise on this page is called a gluteal squeeze. Basically, you're contracting your glutes or your butt muscles, holding them for five seconds and then relaxing. And for the final exercise on this page, uh, it is called a short arc quad. So again, you're going to need a rolled up towel, a pillow, or something firm to place underneath your knee. So I'm going to put this right underneath Andrew's knee. So we'll lift your leg up like this. This exercise is going to be working his quadricep muscle again. So he's going to lift his foot up off of the bed, nice and slow and controlled, holding for just a brief moment and coming back down. Let's take a look at the final three exercises, which are found on page three. The first exercise is called hip abduction and adduction. For this one, Andrew's going to slide his leg out towards the edge of the bed and back towards the middle, working the muscles of his hip. Now, if you've had a hip replacement, specifically using a posterior approach, you'll want to consult with your surgeon or your physical therapist before performing, as it may be contraindicated. The next exercise is called a straight leg raise. So for this exercise, Andrew's going to bend his opposite leg, tighten up his quad muscle, and he's going to lift his legs straight up into the air, nice and slow and controlled, uh, making sure to keep his knee straight as he goes up and down. This one may be the most difficult exercise to perform following surgery, but it's a good indicator of how much control you have of your leg when standing and walking. Again, if you've had a a total hip replacement, 
you may want to consult with your surgeon or your physical therapist if you've had an anterior hip approach as this may be contraindicated at the beginning of rehab. For the final exercise, uh, this one is called a long arc quad and is very similar to the short arc quad which we previously performed. With this one, Andrew is going to be extending his knee, working the quadricep muscle once again, uh, nice and slow and controlled, bringing his foot up and down. It would be to your benefit to take these exercises and practice them prior to coming in for surgery. This will improve your confidence and surgical outcomes. However, if you do try these exercises at home and a specific exercise is increasing your pain, you can stop that exercise or decrease the intensity until following your procedure when you were in the hospital. At that time, you can ask us questions and we will go over the exercise with you so you are performing them with proper technique and safety prior to discharge. We hope you learned something from today's presentation, and we look forward to working with you following your total knee replacement. If you have any questions prior to or after your surgery in regards to physical therapy, please contact us at the CMH Physical Therapy Department. Our number is 218-878-7026 and ask to speak with one of our physical therapists. We will be happy to answer any questions to the best of our ability.